So Bitcoin started to do something really interesting, and I want to show you what that is right here on this chart. Uh, Bitcoin did end up punching in a new higher low, which is absolutely great because that comes in line with our trend of setting higher highs as well. I'm really liking that. But what's even better than that, ladies and gents, is remember what I was saying about the dollar, right? I was talking to you guys in the previous video. If you've been subscribed, you're already going to know this. A so shout out to those of you who are and showing up to these videos, hitting up the like button. Thank you all so, so much. What you're going to know if you watched that previous video, ladies and gents, is that I was saying if the dollar ends up going up to its resistance area that I've looked at at around 111.8, which is exactly where we topped out at today. I mean, well, very close. If you look at the OHLC specifically up here, looking at this H, we topped out at 111.78. So we basically got there. Um, I was saying that if the dollar ends up going that high, Bitcoin would probably end up sliding down to like around this low. Um, and especially uh, that would especially be the case in my view, if the dollar goes up to this resistance area, which sits at about 112. Now, the good thing that the dollar ended up doing was that it pulled back today, ladies and gents. Look at this. We kind of approached that area of resistance for the dollar. We got a little bit of a pullback. We're now just attempting another rally up. But what that enabled Bitcoin to do on this drop right here, in fact, why should I tell you this? I'll just show it to you. If we just throw the Bitcoin chart on top of what happens with the dollar at this time, uh, guys, take a look at this. Very, very interesting. So um, obviously, it's super clear that there's a, a very, very, very clear inverse correlation between the dollar and Bitcoin. I've been saying this for a very long time. This has basically been um, the, the cornerstone of my analysis for... <sighs> maybe a year now, maybe more. Um, you know, we've been calling for this for a really long time, but look at what happens right here. If I just drop a vertical line, basically right when the dollar starts to drop, or I can even take this line back a little bit where the dollar starts to falter, where the dollar stops going up. Dollar, in this case, trades sideways a little bit and then starts to drop. And look at what happens to Bitcoin in that very same time frame. And this move up was huge for Bitcoin because what it means on this technical chart right here is that we have now got a situation painted on this chart where we are setting higher lows right here. This allowed us to punch in a higher low. But what it also meant, guys, is that if we take a look at Bitcoin right now, we're at $20,400, right? When Bitcoin set its low, the dollar was actually lower than where we are right now. This is a really, really big deal. The dollar is higher than where it set its previous high just basically yesterday. The dollar is higher than that currently, but Bitcoin is also higher. What does that mean? With this inverse correlation, generally, if the dollar is going uh, up, Bitcoin is generally going to go down, but Bitcoin has actually gained a little bit of strength against the dollar in today's trading session, and Bitcoin's trading a little bit higher now. Why is that so important? This is a really interesting thing. So the reason that I'm getting really pumped up and excited about this, ladies and gents, is because that does mean now, if the dollar is going to keep moving up, Bitcoin basically has a little bit more room to drop down without actually losing our prior low. This is what I was saying would be disastrous for the market, guys, is if Bitcoin ends up losing this low right here and we sweep it and fall even lower, that's where I think that this kind of short term uptrend that we're in right now could come to an end. And the dollar still looks like it might be ready to rally up because one of the key things I said the dollar could end up doing in the last video is that it could within this kind of uptrend, you know, these uptrends, they always correct, right? Regardless of what time frame you're looking at, whether it's the one day, one month, 10 year, one hour in this case, you know, generally we're going to move up, we're going to correct, we're going to move up, we're going to correct, okay? And these corrections come in the form of price-based corrections where we drop down, they come in the form of time-based corrections where we trade sideways, but they are going to correct, rest assured. And what we've had right here is yet another correction for the dollar, showing us that we might have that strength to at least hit this resistance level, okay, that already happened, or potentially go up to this resistance level. That's basically the final line that I'm seeing for the dollar. If the dollar actually goes above that red line, then I'm going to start becoming a little bit more bearish on Bitcoin again. But I've still got some really, really good reasons to believe that that might not be the case and that Bitcoin's still in a really good place. And I think one of them is just seeing right here that Bitcoin has gained a little bit of strength against the dollar. When the dollar was here previously, Bitcoin was in a much weaker position. Bitcoin isn't in such a weak position now compared to yesterday, compared to the dollar. And that tells me it's gained a little bit of strength, right? We're really reading between the lines here. And the reason that I think that's important, guys, is because that does allow Bitcoin a little bit more wiggle room to drop down without actually invalidating the trend. Now, the good news though, is that because we've actually punched in this low, 
And with this wick right here, it's a little bit too early to call it, but we do potentially have this upward sloping support level forming for Bitcoin right now, which is going to get really, really exciting because that could mean that we're either in some sort of a kind of, uh, you know, rising wedge, which generally these are quite bearish patterns in, uh, you know, trading in financial markets. But we know this as you've been watching this YouTube channel for a while, that when the markets for Bitcoin, for example, tend to produce these kind of patterns, especially when liquidity is re-entering the space. So basically we're getting some more realistic price action which is basically what's been happening ever since this pump initiated, which you guys already know, by the way, I was trading this inside of VIP, uh, went long basically right before the move took off, bought Bitcoin a few days before all of this fun stuff even happened. You already know the deal. The steps to join are, oh my God, this is very hectic. Uh, the steps to join are basically just, just this. Um, let me bring this back on screen right here. The first, well, one of the links in the description to join my Telegram channel, at fourth I send message, ask me how to join. Uh, but What's exciting about this, guys, is, um, is is that you know now that we've got a little bit more liquidity in this market, uh, you know we are potentially forming more what I would consider to be realistic uh, patterns for Bitcoin. And yeah, one of the things Bitcoin does is it trends up, and then it continues to trend up, but slower. And then it trends up again more aggressively, right? So we've seen this happen all the time. I, I feel like I'm going to struggle to find an example of this right now. Let me see if I can do that anyway. Um, yeah, and I mean, here's a good example. I've already found one. Take a look at this. So I found two, actually. This one's even better. Uh, let's zoom in to what happened to Bitcoin right here and take a look at this on the eight hour time frame. Uh, this is a perfect example, guys. Bitcoin does this all the time, right? So we move up over here, trade sideways. Okay, that's our correction. We move up again. In this case, we don't trade sideways. We're still slowly trending higher, but then bam, we get a price explosion again. In this, um, on this occasion, we actually pull back. We get a nice little retracement. And then again, price explosion. This is really, really interesting because generally when a financial market starts doing this, when we're already moving up aggressively, but then we just move up slowly, that's generally going to be a sign of the market losing momentum. And we kind of start to curve down like that. Okay. And then we just really just drop down like a bomb. Um, that's generally what you'd expect to happen if you've got a very traditional uh, kind of um, uh, back backbone of knowledge, I guess, as, a, as an analyst. But for Bitcoin, as you've just seen with this example, that doesn't tend to hold true as often. Uh, and actually, what it does indicate to me is just that the market is getting excited. Okay, just that the market is, you know, we're, we're seeing some nice upward price action. But really, okay, let's dive into the bottom line of what this means. This is showing us that bulls are getting a little bit more desperate to buy Bitcoin, and bears are laying off on selling Bitcoin. So clearly, that sentiment shift is happening where people are just kind of being a little bit more weighted to the upside but this isn't even that bad because if we take a look at the long and short ratios guys my bad this is actually getting bad we've got much more longs okay this is this is totally my mistake this didn't update when i looked at it we do have more long, so this is actually starting to play against my favor. Uh, what I was expecting is that we'd see a little bit more longs right here uh, over the last, I'm sorry, a little bit more shorts right here over the last 24 hours, but it does look like people are piling on here. So that is going to be something for me to watch out for. Um, however, if we take a look at the fear and greed index right here, refresh this page, we're still at good levels, okay? I mean, we're at 30. Uh, I don't really know how this has happened, where longs have piled on, but sentiment has gotten worse, but whatever. Sometimes the numbers are weird like that. Um, we are still kind of flatlining in these fearful territory so i think that's also a good sign just showing us that you know people are while you know the market is getting a little bit more excited clearly you can see that with the longs as well uh you know sentiment is still pretty poor that's still allowing us to potentially move to the upside and we do have this support line as well so what i'm going to be watching now is seeing if this support level breaks we're very close to breaking it it's not going to take much to push bitcoin below this uh, and that's going to mean that the next key level for this market in my view is going to be this green line right here at 20,200, 20,000 300 basically our prior low if we fall down to here we're looking at a potential double bottom formation and then continuing to move up if this fails again that floor is going to be down here at twenty thousand dollars which is still completely fine this is our psychological area of support and guys let's be real we're only at twenty thousand four hundred right so this is a very tight price range you know bitcoin can just kind of fluctuate like this and it wouldn't really mean anything so I'm not actually too worried about this because we've been given that breathing space from the dollar. And that is really, really cool. Now, if we take a quick look at the S&P 500, which we know is absolutely essential for our analysis right here, if you've been watching this channel, you're going to know 
that the S&P 500 here actually ended up kind of moving up a little bit earlier today and has been sent right back down. So to me, this is starting to look like some consolidation now where, you know, if this was going to be a real rejection, I think we would have gotten a much more fierce rejection than this. The, the, the trading session hasn't actually ended yet. There's still a whole three hours left to go. So anything can happen. But if you take a look at the last time we got rejected from this resistance area, guys, look at this. I mean, it, it was a huge, I mean, this is a one hour candle um, and this was a huge rejection. I mean, on this one hour time frame, the S&P 500 dropped by about 1.8% from its uh, high to its candle body close. Um, you know, and in fact, from Wick to Wick, S&P 500 dropped by 2.2%. So we're just not seeing that kind of move. This was still quite a powerful move, but we've already kind of recovered a little bit of it. And crucially, that dump just kept continuing throughout that day's trading session. We haven't seen that today. So I'm not seeing huge levels of weakness in the S&P 500 compared to what we've seen before. And this is actually, in my opinion, a really important way to conduct analysis. And why am I saying that? Well, it's purely because if we're responding to a set resistance level differently to how we've responded responded to it in the past. In this case, we're not displaying as much weakness over here as we were over here. Well, then that to me is going to be a sign that this market could have gained a little bit more strength. So the same thing that I'm seeing with Bitcoin right here, I'm seeing it with the S&P 500 as well. So that's showing me with multiple different charts that we are showing some similar characteristics right here of the market potentially gathering a little bit more strength. So for me, that invalidation is still going to be down here to the um, kind of $20,000 level. As long as we're above this level, we're good. I'm happy with it. Bad news, though, we're alternating in this video. Bad news, though is that we have lost our one hour Ichimoku cloud. We successfully got a bounce from it, but we don't have that support anymore. It's completely closed up. It's it's probably going to be resistance. You know, when you watch this video, depending on what happens in the market in the next 30 minutes or so, um, you know, and so that's not particularly great, but we do still at least have EMA support from the four hour time frame. This is also closing up. And I think what I'm really trying to get at here is that the bulls have a window of opportunity and that window of opportunity is closing. It's closing pretty quickly, actually, a little bit faster than I thought it would. Um, you know, we do have that one hour. We did have that one hour Ichimoku cloud. We no longer have it. Our four hour EMA ribbon is still going to be acting as support the way I'm seeing it, but we're just kind of trading in our support level now, you know, so kind of similar to what I just said about the S&P 500. You see, if we're not really getting rejected from resistance, we're just kind of hanging around in this range, then that to me is an indication that we might break to the upside. But it's the same thing with our support levels. You know, if we're not getting quick, big bounces like what happened right here or like what happened right here, we're on the daily chart, don't forget. So this is quite a big deal. If we don't get these kind of quick recoveries, but instead, if we just kind of consolidate at our support levels, let me see if I can find an example of where this happens. So I guess if I'm being really picky, you could say that this was an area of support. And then over here, there's like four candles where the market just doesn't move at all. It's just kind of hanging around on our support level. That makes it a little bit more likely that we're going to be breaking our support. So, uh, you know, we're potentially in a similar situation to that with Bitcoin right now, according to what I'm seeing. And that to me is showing me that, yeah, this trading, I'm sorry, this bullish window of opportunity it might be closing up a little bit. It might be closing up. The bulls might be running out of steam. They need to pull something out of the bag fairly soon. And yeah, that is actually evidenced by the longs and shorts. Um, you know, again, if people are really starting to pile on longs, then, you know, I'm going to start worrying a little bit more about what's going on in this market. Now, like I said, I've been in my long position for quite a while. Um, I'm, I've chosen 10x leverage. I chose this leverage for a very specific reason. Of course, all these kind of things, very, very minute details of why I do what I do. They go inside of VIP, which you can join by following these steps on screen. Just find the link to four flies gold then click on my name and then send message to ask me how to join this puts you in a direct chat with me by the way so um you can you know you can ask away anything you like and all that good stuff and if i can't respond to you of course one of my assistants will but the reason that this is um you know not too worrying to me is i've already actually been able to secure profits on the way up to basically twenty one thousand dollars. i've secured profits like 50 percent or above i can't even remember now but very very impressive press uh, impressive profit targets to say the least um and that is obviously very very exciting and guys if you're looking for a place to do this I mean, there's a lot of beautiful trading opportunities in the market right now. Check out BitGet, guys. You're getting a fairly easy bonus. If you deposit $4,000 and trade a little bit, you're going to be getting $400. Other exchanges offer you bigger bonuses, but they're not as easy as BitGet to get. So take advantage of this if you want to 
jump into this volatility and literally trade with free money you know you can put this money behind any trade you like it doesn't matter and you will uh, be able to keep the profits that you make you will be able to withdraw those profits as well so BitGet, just like all the other top exchanges guys it's actually one of the top exchanges you may or may not know about this they were primarily in the asian markets and now kind of moving into the west um, these guys have a solid solid platform for trading i've been using it myself as well uh, and the best part, in my opinion, is that you can use this platform from anywhere in the world. You don't need a VPN. You don't need to go through KYC. You have very high withdrawal limits and you're, you're getting basically the same product that the other top players are offering in the space as well. So well, well worth checking out. There's a few other things that make these guys pretty unique. They even have a copy trading feature. Not really my thing, but a lot of people do like that. Go ahead and check them out, guys. It's a really nice, easy bonus to get by following that link in the description down below. Um, you're getting free money to trade with. And I think that's very exciting because if we do end up moving to the upside, um, you know, basically a risk free play that you could make is um, you know, because you wouldn't have to actually trade with your own money if you get that bonus is, yeah, just kind of looking at a long position where, you know, even if we get up to this high right here, um, you know, this is something that I'd be interested in. Um, you know, this is a 2.4% move. But again, on 10x leverage, that's a 24% profit. You know, I don't need to tell you why that's a big deal. If you pull off a few of those in a row, you're going to really change what your account looks like. 24% profit on 10K is no joke, especially if you start to compound that. In fact, I want to run you through the power of compounding again. I used to do this all the time on this YouTube channel. Let me know if this is something you want me to uh, do again with you guys. Just running you through the power of this math, where if you were to get, let's say, three 24% profits in a row. First of all, I just want you to pause the video and guess what you think the result will be. I'm going to guess as well. I'm going to guess this is going to put you at like 80% profit. Let me know what you think. Let's see what we're looking at. We're looking at 90% profit, guys. If you get three 24% profits, like 24% is not that hard to get, especially for trading derivatives. Um, you know, you're already looking at nearly doubling your money. That is the power of compounding because the next time you're going to be applying that uh, beautiful profit on $12,400, right? Um, you know, so you compound forward very, very aggressively. The next time you're applying it on 15K, um, you know, and you can see how these numbers, they start to get out of hand very fucking quickly, right? Uh, this can, you know, I mean, you can just keep going and things get very, very crazy this is this is assuming you have a hundred percent success rate obviously it's not going to happen but to prove the math uh you know this is why a lot of people they're kind of unsure on how to trade these markets you know my favorite way to trade these markets is to simply aim for these easily reproducible gains um and you know if i get a home run if i hit 50 percent like i did with this trade or whatever cool i'll take it you know i'm not i'm not going to say no to it but it's all about compounding these smaller gains keeping your capital safe while you're at it uh and again you know i mean to, you know th th this, this is this is a brilliant brilliant opportunity in the market the way i'm seeing it because i am still seeing a better risk to reward ratio to the upside given what we're producing on this chart right now the fact that we're not setting lower lows the fact that we are setting higher highs right now in this market the fact that we still have support from the four hour ema ribbon let's actually take a look at the daily it's been a little while since i've looked at this we're getting all of those bullish crossovers right now in the daily showing us that bullish momentum uh, is returning to the market our momentum is actually shifting towards the upside which is absolutely phenomenal because again that is really good good indication to me that we could be looking at a healthier market that is going to be able to potentially rise uh you know a, a little bit more in the long term which is great because if we've got the short term pointing to something and then we get the long term pointing to something then we really start to build the same kind of conclusions on multiple different time frames and that's where we can actually start tapping into some really really powerful exciting analysis and obviously that is absolutely fantastic so i'm quite excited to be seeing that guys i'm going to be watching what happens with the dollar um you know as this develops if we kind of get a rejection right here and the dollar starts to move down again that's going to be the best case scenario for bitcoin in my opinion uh obviously this is going to be an important level for the dollar if you weren't watching our recent videos for whatever reason perhaps you're not subscribed you don't have the bell icon checked or whatever um you you may or may not know that uh, yeah this 111.8 area for the dollar has been a very important area of support and an important area of resistance and that's basically what i'm expecting to happen again now like i said if we break through it that red line is going to be my final defense for the dollar but uh you know if this does end up uh giving us a little bit of a rejection anywhere between here and this red line basically i think that we could be looking at a fairly steep drop down for the dollar especially since the dollar has confirmed for us now by setting um you know a series of lower lows and lower highs uh, the dollar has confirmed for us that we are at least within this very short slash midterm perspective we are in a downtrend and that i think is a very very powerful thing for these markets it's already been powerful for these markets so i'm expecting that very much to continue
continues. So I'm going to be watching uh, the dollar and then also Bitcoin just to make sure that we don't slip below these lows. If we do, then yeah, like I said, I think things could get a little bit ugly. I think it can happen fairly quickly as well. So this is obviously something which I'm going to be keeping tabs on pretty, uh, pretty well on. But you know, one of the other things that I would like to see develop is, you know, potentially just, you know, making good use of all of these kind of support hits that we're starting to produce. And then potentially, you know, it could be that we enter some sort of a, you know, ascending triangle formation, perhaps, you know, something that looks a little bit like this. Very, very possible market kind of ping pongs between these levels, um, you know, maybe another one like that. And then you know, we kind of we hit our high at 21, we drop down to kind of like 20.6. And then bam, we get a nice, really, uh, really exciting breakout to the upside blue sky breakout above this ascending triangle. This would be really because not only are we getting a series of basically price-based corrections, this is all within a larger time-based correction as well, which is absolutely great. And it does show us just because that support level is right now, right now, this might change, obviously. If we lose our support level currently, then this can change completely. But right now, we are actually maintaining a structure of higher lows, basically. Uh, you know, that is an indication that, yeah, the market could actually be, uh, you know, getting, getting a little bit more, I don't want to say desperate, but far more willing to buy Bitcoin at slightly higher prices. And that is obviously a really key indication of momentum shifting to the upside. Um, you know, and all we need is sellers to decide to stop selling. And we need, you know, I mean, if if, sell, if, if uh, buyers and sellers are at, at, are at a, you know, the same kind of baseline, then we have an equilibrium. The market's just not moving. But as soon as uh, sellers decide to leave the market and demand stays the same, that's where you get those big spikes up in price, right? So that's what happened right here. That's what happened right here. And it's the opposite of what happened right here or right here very very important to be able to understand the really bare bones of these markets the very um i don't even want to say nitty-gritty just the, the fundamentals of how prices move uh it's very very important to understand that kind of thing and of course that's exactly what we go through inside of the four flies vip um uh, channel and more specifically inside of the four flies academy courses which most of you guys who join are going to be getting for free depending on which plan you take right most most people inside of vip have that for free uh, and if you don't uh, they're not even too expensive considering what you're getting so just reach out following these steps if you're interested in that kind of thing and i'll see you on the other side right there uh not a whole lot else for me to talk about but i do have one cool video with this chart that i want to show you if you want me to cover this uh drop me a comment uh just saying sunday because this chart I'm not going to say any more, uh, but it's it's very, very cool. It has something to do with Sundays. So um, if you want to see me make a video on this, this is going to be all about the key precise things that Bitcoin needs to change in order for a really, really nice big bull market to come for Bitcoin. I need you to let me know in the comments. Just write Sunday uh, in the comment section if this is something that you want to see. Uh, and actually, just while we're looking at the Ichimoku cloud, I want to throw this on as well, just to take a quick look at this and just reiterate something I've already said. Um, which is that on the daily time frame, if we do look at our beautiful Ichimoku cloud, uh, this is basically at its thinnest, uh, thinnest point that it's ever been at during this kind of cycle in our downtrend, where we're basically approaching an area right here where you know this resistance cloud isn't actually that strong and it's not that strong because you know we've kind of been punching uh these levels before so if we're able to get above at any point it's probably going to be somewhat soon just given what this Ichimoku cloud is seeing, according to my own analysis, obviously it doesn't mean I'm right. But generally, when we have a really wide Ichimoku cloud, like right here, it's going to be very hard to penetrate. Even right here, very, la uh, very, very wide. Right now, even right now, it's not nearly as wide as it was before, right? I mean, I can just measure this and show you this very clearly. Bam, right here. Take a look at this red line. Look at how much bigger the Ichimoku cloud was on our previous rejection and how much bigger still it was on our previous rejection before that. So we are really really, really narrowing and look at how much that Ichimoku cloud narrows even more just into the uh, second week of November. Definitely looking very, very exciting right here in terms of showing us that we do have a window of opportunity, but on the short term, we are potentially losing it. Long term, momentum is starting to shift. So this is something to be keeping an eye on, ladies and gents. I'm going to keep analyzing this and bringing you guys my market updates. If you find these useful, if you find these helpful, entertaining or whatever, do me a favor, guys, just throw up a like on this YouTube video. I am in a slightly different setting. My microphone isn't ideal. If you have a problem with it, let me know in the comments. I'll try and sort something out, but hopefully this should be good enough. I never really get complaints about my audio. Uh, but with that, guys, I really hope you have enjoyed this video. Take advantage of this free cash. This is free money you can trade with. You can do whatever you like with. And like I said, you get to keep those gains. If you make any, you can withdraw them, all that good stuff. Bit get available anywhere in the world. No KYC, no VPN. It might say you're in a restricted territory or whatever, but it's still going to work. 
So definitely well worth checking out. Uh, and of course, Bybit is the other key exchange that I'm using right now. They have zero fees on spot pairs as well. I, I believe BitGet might be the same, but I can't confirm that right now. Uh, and so if you want to check out Bybit, you're getting actually up to $4,000 for free, uh, which is actually 10 times higher than BitGet. But the uh, the requirements to get that bonus are a little bit harder to meet. So um, you know, check them both out. It's free money either way. Uh, it's very, very exciting to be able to get that kind of free money and then speculate on the market. And again, just know that you can and keep the profits of whatever you end up doing anyway so there you go guys really hope you've enjoyed this one you know what to do if you have hit up the like subscribe tick the bell do all that good stuff i am gonna get going now i'm so tired i've had a traveling day and i'll see you all in the next one cheers Bye bye